This morning we are uh, going to focus the totality of Jesus' revelation of God's character, particularly what he demonstrated on the cross. And it is the truth when compared to all other sources of truth. So Jesus is the ultimate source of all truth because he is the embodiment of truth itself. He is the truth. With that in mind, we will start with the epistle of Paul, the apostle to the Hebrews. And uh, in the following verses, we must heed the fact that he is addressing us living in these last days before the second coming of Jesus Christ. So we'll turn to Hebrews chapter 1, and we're going to look at verses 1 to verse 9. Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 to verse 9. God, who at various times and in various ways spoke in the past to the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days spoken to us by his Son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become so much better than the angels, as he has by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. Than they. For to which of the angels did he ever say, You are my son, today I have begotten you. And, and again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. But when he again brings the firstborn into the world, he says, Let all the angels of God worship him. And of the angels, he says, <clears throat> Who makes his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire. But to the Son, he says, Your throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated lawlessness. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness more than your companions. And with particular emphasis on verse 9, when he talks of with the oil of gladness more than your companions. So what is being brought out here, again in, in verse 1, God who at various times and in various ways spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days spoken to us by his Son. So if you go through the book of Hebrews, in every aspect, Jesus is better than everything else that has ever been stated. So he becomes the central person for all of us to pay attention to. And we are going to do this. With this in mind now, let's go to Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. And we are going to look uh, uh, with verses, just verses 1 and 2. Hebrews chapter 11, <clears throat> verses 1 and 2. Keeping this in mind, some of the preeminent people of faith from the Old Testament is mentioned in Hebrews chapter 11. Okay, keep that in mind, it's very important. So with that in mind, let's look at verses 1 and 2. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by, for by it, the elders obtained a good testimony. So what verse, verses 1 and 2 is telling us about all the Old Testament uh, people of faith, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, they were hoping for things, substance of things hoped for, and, and the evidence of things not seen. So they hadn't seen, and what we, we're going to address this, what was it 
that their faith was based on and they hadn't seen. So uh, with that now, let's look in particular to Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 4. And the question that we should ask ourselves when we look at Hebrews chapter 11 verse 4, how does Abel being dead still speaks? Okay, so looking at Hebrews chapter 11, verse 4. By faith, Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, through which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and through it, he, he being dead, still speaks. Okay, so before we're going to ask to answer that question, let us look at Genesis chapter 4. Okay, before we answer that question, let's go to Genesis chapter 4, and, and we are going to go from verse 1 of Genesis chapter 4 to verse 4. Now Adam knew Eve his wife, and she conceived and bore Cain, and said, I have acquired a man from the Lord. Then she bore again, this time his brother Abel. Now Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought an offering of the fruit of the ground to the Lord. Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock and of their fat. And the Lord respected Abel and his offering. Okay, in verse 3, when it reads in verse 3, and in the process of time, in the process of time literally means at the end of days okay so so at the end of days Cain and Abel both we we know brought uh, brought their sacrifice what do you think would have been the end of days I believe that if you look at this, the end of days, I believe, refers to the end of the six days, and on the Sabbath, they brought their respective sacrifices, okay? So that's what I believe in verse 3. In the process of time, literally, at the end of days, which is the end of the six days, on the seventh day, they brought their sacrifice. Now, let's go back and look at the question. Now, let us answer the question. How does Abel, being dead, still speaks? That's in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 4. By faith, Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, through which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gift, and through it, he being dead, still speaks. With that in mind, look at Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 24. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 24. To Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaks better things than that of Abel. Okay, so what do we see here? Abel's blood cried out for what? If you go back and look at it, Abel's blood cried out for vengeance. And how does Jesus' blood cry out? Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14. Pursue peace with all people and holiness without which no one will see the Lord. See the difference? Abel's blood cried out for vengeance. Jesus' blood teaches us to pursue peace, okay, with all people and holiness, without which no one will see God. So if Jesus is not the center of everything for us, like Abel's blood asking for what? Vengeance. And Jesus' blood is totally opposite to that okay now let's look at verses in chapter 12 again let's look at verses 25 to 29 
See that you do not refuse him who speaks. For if they did not escape who refused him who spoke on earth, much more shall we not escape if we turn away from him who speaks from heaven, whose voice then shook the earth, but now he has promised, saying, Yet once more I shake not only the earth, but also heaven. Now this, yet once more, indicates the removal of things, of those things that are being shaken, as of things that are made, that the things which cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. For our God is a consuming fire. So everything that can be shaken is going to be shaken. So everything that is based on Cain's blood and in Abel's blood that is seeking for vengeance is going to be shaken and only what Jesus' blood demonstrated and proved, which was we had looked at in, in verse uh, uh, 14. We must keep that in mind, okay? Now, with that, I want us now to turn, and we are going to look at some very important things now. Turn to Genesis chapter 4, and we're going to read again the passage we started with, Genesis chapter 4. We will start from verse 1 and go all the way down to verse 15. Now Adam knew his wife, and she conceived and bore Cain and said, I have acquired a man from the Lord. Then she bore again, this time his brother Abel. Now Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought an offering of the fruit of the ground to the Lord. Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock and of their fat. And the Lord respected Abel and his offering. But he did not respect Cain and his offering. And Cain was very angry, and his countenance fell. So the Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry, and why has your countenance fallen? If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin lies at your door. And its desire is for you, but you should rule over it. Now Cain talked with Abel his brother, and it came to pass, when they were in the field, that Cain rose up against Abel his brother and killed him. Then the Lord said to Cain, Where is Abel your brother? He said, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? And he said, What have you done? The voice of your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. So now you are cursed. You are cursed from the earth, which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. When you till the ground, it shall no longer yield its strength to you. A fugitive and a vagabond you shall be on the earth. And Cain said to the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. Surely you have driven me out of this day, out this day from the face of the ground. I shall be hidden from your face. I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond on the earth, and it will happen that anyone who finds me will kill me. And the Lord said to him, Therefore, whoever kills Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord set a mark on Cain, lest anyone finding him should kill him. Now we've read this, and we must keep in mind that <clears throat> who was born first from Adam and Eve? Cain. 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 Okay? So, so from Adam and Eve... We have first Cain, and Cain is born, and then after that, the scriptures tell us that Abel was born, okay? Now, Jesus, uh, uh, before we go there, the human race today, okay, keep, I'm bringing this out. The human race today represents these two men, Cain and Abel. 
Or is represented. Is represented, sorry. And we are going to make a choice, every one of us. Remember that both brothers brought a sacrifice? We are going to make a choice. Either we are going to be governed by the principle that was in Abel or by the principle that was in Cain. Every one of us will be making that kind of a decision. The kind of sacrifice we are going to bring, whatever it may be. If it is going to be like Cain's, then we have gone against what Abel's sacrifice was. Now Abel and Cain both brought whatever they understood to bring. Why did Cain bring the wrong kind of sacrifice? And Abel brought the right kind of sacrifice. We should ask ourselves the question, when Cain was born, did Adam and Eve educate the both sons? Cain, when Cain was born and when Abel was born, did Adam and Eve educate those two sons of what happened in their lives? What do you think? Did Adam and Eve teach Cain and Abel what ended up happening in their lives? I believe they did. I really believe that the parents must have told these two sons what had happened to them when they disobeyed God and ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And when they ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, what happened to their mind and how they viewed God with a duality. They looked at God as the person that was going to out to kill him. And with that kind of a fear, they viewed God. So Adam and Eve must have told the both sons. They'd be very careful. This is what ended up happening to us. And now we are trying to tell you, don't let this happen to you. So the mind that they had, after the parents had told them, the minds that they had ref reflected in the sacrifice. Okay, so their sacrifice was a reflection of what was on already in them, what they believed, what they had harbored for themselves, they demonstrated it in their sacrifice. So if both the boys brought the kind of sacrifice they did, one obeyed what the parents had told them and what they should be doing. And that became their mindset. That became, I mean, that became Abel's mindset. Whatever the parents told, Abel saw it, he believed it, he knew what had transpired in the lives of their parents. So he obeyed and followed with a clear mind, a good conscience, and he did the right thing. Cain, did what? He rejected whatever the parents had told them, told him. And his sacrifice was a reflection of that. Okay? So when we read, uh, when we had read in, in Hebrews, Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, is speaking to us as Cain and Abel. Uh, sacrifices reflected. Will we like Cain, not listen to who? To Jesus, okay? If we don't listen to Jesus, what will we end up doing? If we don't listen to the revelation and teachings of Jesus Christ, we, in our minds, will become what? Killers. How? We might not physically kill people, but because of us, rejecting the truth, we will end up treating other people, viewing other people with that kind of a wrong mind, okay? And we will want to kill our brothers and sisters, even in our minds, that don't agree with us. However we do it, 
And with that kind of a mind and heart and soul, we will reflect either Cain or Abel. Whatever we believe. So Jesus again is the mediator of the new covenant. So everything that we, for us now, has to be based on what Jesus Christ is revealing, which is the better covenant, which is the new covenant, better than what was in the old covenant. Abel gives us an understanding of God's character, which Cain also knew, but he did not want to believe the truth. Okay? Cain was given the same understanding. Abel was given the same understanding. Cain believed the truth. I mean, sorry. Abel believed the truth. Cain rejected the truth. And dear ones, we are facing the same issue from the scriptures. We are to understand Jesus Christ and his revelation of God. If we don't, we will, like Cain, be also be exposed to it, but we will choose to do what? To go against that revelation. And that revelation is going to be based on the person of Jesus Christ. And, and I want us to pay attention to these verses now, okay? Now, Cain talked with Abel. I'm reading from verse 8 of chapter 4. Now Cain talked with Abel, his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and killed him. He murdered his brother. And see what ends up happening. This is the understanding that we are going to receive only through the person of Jesus Christ. And we are told here, then the Lord said to Cain, where is Abel, your brother? He said, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? And he said, what have you done? The voice of your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground, crying out for in vengeance. Okay. Now, so now you are cursed from the earth, which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. When you till the ground, it shall no longer yield its strength to you. A fugitive and a vagabond, you shall be on earth. And Cain said to the Lord, verse 13, And Cain said to the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. If you go back and look at that original word for punishment, dear ones, that word is iniquity. Okay? So what Cain is stating, and Cain said to the Lord, my punishment, my iniquity is greater than I can bear. And what is the sin, this iniquity? It is exactly the sin that Adam and Eve committed in the garden. And we know from John 8, 44, that this iniquity was originated with who? With Lucifer. When Lucifer sinned, this iniquity originated with him. And Jesus clearly tells us that Lucifer, when this iniquity was found in him, he became the devil and that he became a murderer and a liar from the beginning. So he introduced the death principle into God's universe. And here... And Cain said to the Lord, my iniquity is greater than I can bear. Reflecting again to the death principle, he murdered his brother. Verse 14, surely you have driven me out this day from the face of the ground. I shall be hidden from your face. I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond on the earth. And it will, and it will happen that anyone who finds me will kill me. I'm emphasizing this this fact here okay i shall be a fugitive and a vagabond on this earth and it will happen that anyone who finds me will kill me surely to understand that 
the beginning of verse 14. Surely you have driven me out this day from the face of the ground. And I shall be, okay, and I shall be hidden from your face. Cain is stating now what? I am going to be hidden from your face. It's not some arbitrary thing that God is going to be doing. He, because of this iniquity in him, is going to be what? Removed from looking at God's face the way he should. Then see what ends up happening. And the Lord said to him, verse 15, Therefore, whoever kills Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord set a mark on Cain, lest anyone finding him should kill him. This is what? This is Jesus now as the mediator of the new covenant is showing us how to deal with. People, this is a tough thing for us to accept and see. How to deal with who? With people that are even murderers. And look at what God did. Look at what God did here. And he even put a mark on Cain that nobody should take his life. Why? Because that, dear one, is established here in the first two children of Adam and Eve. It is a settled issue. And we find in the New Testament, in Hebrews chapter 11, in the Hall of Fame of all the ancient people that is mentioned as people of faith, that first person who's mentioned there is who? Abel. Abel is the first person that is mentioned there. And we have seen how God has dealt with Abel. Okay? With that in mind, now I want us to look at Hebrews chapter 11, verses 39 and 40. Keeping in mind with what we have discussed so far, and now we are going to see in the context of all the people that have been mentioned about uh, the prophets and everyone that died by faith, what were they looking forward to? They were looking forward to, they died in faith, but they were looking forward to something. They didn't receive the promise. They didn't receive the promise, but they were looking forward to something. Here we are, we better make sure for ourselves, that we keep this in mind, that the promise is already given to us. Because Paul clearly states, all of God's promises, all of God's promises are yes amen. and amen in who? In the person of Jesus Christ. So the promise that they were expecting in the Old Testament they were waiting for who? For the Messiah, for the revelation of Jesus Christ. They didn't have what we have. So we better make sure that we are listening to the message that Abel had received. Both had received it. Abel obeyed, Cain did not. And we should make sure that we keep that in mind. With that, let's read verses 39 and 40 of Hebrews 11. And these all, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise. God having provided something better for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. So here, can you see what is being stated? That all these that has been mentioned in from Abel all the way down, all of these having obtained a good testimony. They lived by faith. They had a good testimony through faith, did not receive the promise. Verse 40, God having provided something better for us, 
that they should not be made perfect apart from us. What has God provided something that is better for us? Jesus Christ. See? God has provided something better for us that none of them had, dear ones. None of them had. We have it. So we, again, must make sure that we are not following the path of who? Cain. But we are following the path of Abel. And it involves the death principle. Do you want it involves the death principle? And where did the death principle originate? When Lucifer what? Committed iniquity. He became a murderer from the beginning. And here, in all of our study and understanding, we must make sure that we are following the tree of life principle and not the tree of the death principle represented by the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. With that now, let's look at chapter 12, verses 1 and 2 of Hebrews, chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. So here, after Jesus completed at his ascension, where did he go? Right at the right hand of the throne of God. At Jesus' ascension, he went straight to where? The Holy of Holies. He went right into the Holy of Holies and he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. So with verse 1, Therefore we also, since we have are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses. Who are the great cloud of witnesses? All that is mentioned in Hebrews chapter 11. From Abel, all of those people that died in faith but did not receive the promise which was the person of Jesus Christ. They all died in faith and we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight. Let us lay aside every weight, everything that is keeping us in bondage to the truth. To, I mean, is keeping us in bondage from knowing the truth. Okay? Every weight, which means to say every way we're going to interpret the Bible, if it is not interpreted in the light and the person of Jesus Christ, we are carrying this kind of a bondage or weight. Then, the next portion here, let us lay aside every weight and the writer is Paul and he states there what? He uses the article, the sin. The sin is not talking of what? All sins in the plural. It is talking of this singular sin, the sin, which is so easily, which so easily ensnares us. And how does this, this sin so easily ensnares us? Because John the Baptist has clearly told, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Same article is used, the sin of the world. This originated where? In the garden. The sin originated in the garden when Adam and Eve ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Their view of God radically changed. They looked at God as a killer and they hid from him because he had told them the day you eat of it, you will surely die. So with that kind of a mind, that was the sin. And only person that can take away that sin from our lives is the person of Jesus Christ. When that is taken care of, it takes care of other aspects. Of the sin problem too. So the tap root, the tap root of sin is the sin. And once that is taken care of, 
then we have been no longer what? In bondage, ensnared by the sin. Then Paul states us, let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Once you've got that, you run the race with endurance, with that right understanding, that right mind. Looking, here we go. You cannot do anything. Looking unto Jesus. Jesus is the originator or what? The author of our faith. So Jesus is what? The starting point of our faith and what also? The finisher of our, pay, of our faith. So our faith should be based on nothing else but the person of Jesus Christ who starts our faith, the originator of our faith, and what? The finisher of our faith. So our faith must be totally locked in with the person of Jesus Christ. From beginning to end. Nobody outside of him. Why? Because look, it tells us, who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For us, the writer to the book of Hebrews, which I believe is Paul, and the New King James, I mean the King James Version states it that Paul is the author, we must keep this in mind for ourselves. That every aspect of our faith must be based completely and totally from the beginning to the end. And nothing is to penetrate that. You must not allow anything else to come into that faith. That starts with Jesus and ends with Jesus. It should be nothing else but Jesus Christ from the beginning to the end. And my prayer, again, for all of us, that we will not lose sight of the importance of Jesus for us. Because the Old Testament people were looking forward to this, and we are so fortunate that we have been given this on a gold platter. Thank you.